For scorecards to take shape, system calendars are required. To work with them, I need to select Administration in the bottom left, and then select Calendars under Configuration. I see all the calendars that have been added to my environment. The top three are standard calendars. The bottom three are custom calendars that I handcrafted. To create a calendar that hasn't been added to the system already, I would select Add Calendar. I then need to determine if I'm adding a standard or custom calendar. For standard calendars, there's a drop-down of all those that haven't been added to my system yet. If I wanted to add weekly, I would select it and then click Add. For custom calendars, I need to select it, give it a name, like Training, and then select Add. Once again, I'll just select Cancel. To edit a calendar that's already been added, I would select the calendar I want to change like monthly, and then click Edit Calendar. If I wanted to prevent users from updating KPIs and notes after the 15th of the month, I would simply type 15 in each of these boxes and click Save. However, once again, I'll select Cancel. An important thing to note is that calendars don't automatically extend to the end of time. For example, if I selected yearly, I see that the last period of that calendar might be the current year, 2021. Unfortunately, given the fact that we're most of the way through the year already, this could start to create problems for my users. For example, if I go to my other tab that already has product revenue selected under scorecards, in the top right, you'll notice that I cannot forward past 2021 to 2022. And this is due to the yearly calendar stopping at 2021. To fix that, I'll go back to my other tab. I will then select Extend Calendar, select the month, day, and year I want to extend it to, and then select Extend. I'll see that an additional period has been added. An important item to note is that process will trigger recalculation of scores. I'll demonstrate that by selecting background process status underneath monitoring. After I just extended the calendar, my scorecard and initiative calculations section now contains a number of uncalculated scores. If your spider impact environment is large, I recommend making these adjustments at the end of the business day or prior to the start of a weekend. The good news in my small environment, it will process these calculations in a relatively short period of time. And if I click refresh, you'll see that is now complete. However, in a very large system, that would have taken a longer period of time. With that said, I'll go back to calendars. The process to extend the other standard calendars like monthly is exactly the same, so I'll leave those as is. However, in regard to custom calendars, there is a little more work involved since the system does not know how to automatically extend something like a fiscal calendar, which can vary from company to company. To give an example of that, I'll select fiscal year, and I see that this calendar only contains two periods, which is for fiscal year 2018 through 19, and then the year after that. If I wanted to add a period for the next fiscal year, I would select Add Period. I'd provide a period title, like FY 2020-21. I would then select a start date of July 1st, 2020, and give it an end date maybe of June 30th, 2021. I would then select Add Period. With that, I've shown how to extend both standard and custom calendars. To see the fruits of my labor, I'll go back to my other tab and select Refresh. I can now see that I can migrate to 2022, but not beyond that. If I switch to the fiscal year calendar, I should have the ability to pick from three fiscal calendars with fiscal year 2020 to 21 available at the bottom. 